It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We need to start acting like a big boy football. It's time for the jet pack to die. You're listening to Weapons Hot on Sports War Radio and the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Charles fires one into the end zone. It is caught. That's a jet touchdown. And now here is your host, DJ the Painkiller, and Kevin Jackson. What's going on, Jet Nation? Welcome to another edition of Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network and Sports War Radio. And quite frankly, wherever you get your New York Jets broadcast fix, I am your host, CJ the Painkiller Simone, And I am joined, as always, by my co-pilot, my right seater, and one of my very best friends. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring them on. Put your hands together. For Mr. Kevin Jackson! Jack, brother. I, I tell you, I got to get ahead of this some crowd noise, I tell you. No, we gotta get that. We really do. The, the, the crowd goes wild. The crowd goes wild. Once again, I, I say it every week, man. I say it every week, every time we come in. If you have never had a weapons hot intro, you have never been properly introduced. Um, once again, CJ, I really thank you so very much uh, for for bringing me back tonight. Uh, this is gonna be fun, man. I mean, uh, I know first night of actual football games going on right now. Hope we're not. Uh, uh, well, I do hope we're interrupting some folks. Uh, game tonight because uh, I mean who really cares the Jets are playing uh, this weekend and uh, you know that's really all that matters to me at this point um, I'm excited man the season is upon us let's get it going let's get it going we're going to finish up our uh, our no our our, our uh, uh, series uh, I don't know if we want to call them enemies all the time but uh, it's the Patriots yeah they're enemies <laughs> what can we do <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean look, look uh, you know tonight you just you just said it well um, we are going to finish up part three tonight of the Know Thy Enemy series uh, here on the Weapons Hot broadcast. Um, the, tonight we finish up with the New England Patriots. Um, if you guys did not get the opportunity to catch uh, part two, uh, we did air part two last night on Facebook Live. I invite everyone to go to the Weapons Hot page and go and take a look at it. And tonight, helping us break down the, the division rival New England Patriots, we have AFCE at... Uh, AFC East analyst, try saying that five times fast, Mr. Jeff Stenberg joining us on the StatementGames.com hotline. Jeff, it's a great pleasure to have you on the show this evening. How are you, my friend? Uh, it's terrific to be in enemy territory, CJ. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's, you know, it's been a lifelong dream to be on a Jeff podcast. Okay. <laughs> Listen, well, Jeff. No, we 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 don't consider you an enemy, but uh, obviously, you know the, the the way that the hierarchy has gone over the course of the past uh, how many ever hundreds of years. It seems like uh, the Patriots are our uh, are, are most heated rivalry, even if we haven't really been able to measure up. So uh, hopefully, we'll we'll see some changes. But uh, really interested to talk to you because the team is filled up a little bit. There's a lot of flux going over there. So I'm uh, really happy to really interested to hear your takes on uh, on not only where you're coming from, but where you're going. Yeah, I look forward to it. All right. So really quick, because this is your first time uh, being on, on Weapons Hot, um, please tell, tell the listening public a little bit about you and, um, you know, what, what you're all about. Because obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're held in very high, high regard by uh, a, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Mr. Errol Marks, who will actually be taking the, sh- uh, taking the air a little bit later on this evening. So uh, I'm sure you have a, a bunch of uh, – uh, fun things to share with us about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've known Arrow for a little bit now, and uh, he's an uh, interesting character. You know, I've been on his show quite a few times, and lifelong Patriots fan, and uh, I've been following the team ever since I was a kid. I grew up in the area. I went to the, you know, the the Patriots riots for in '97 for the Jaguars game, and I've worked a little bit in the in the sports arena in in selling insurance to college football players. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to uh, talk some Patriots football. Should be exciting for you guys, right? First time you guys are discussing professional football on the show? (laughs) 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 uh, I I guess we got got jokes. (laughs) That was good. 
kind of, we kind of, we kind of deserve that. We kind of deserve that. But yes. it, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't so long ago that we actually were relevant. So, uh, you know, hopefully we're looking to it. really was that way. long ago. Do you realize the Jets have beaten the Patriots exactly 11 times in 20 years? That's not yeah, a good record. Yeah, no, and that's no, no, no. and I'm even throwing in the win the Jets had in the playoffs against the Patriots. It's 11. Mm-hmm. It's four you in know, the last I, I 10 maybe years. Not, maybe, maybe I just have a, a fond memory of, of uh, watching uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick throw the touchdown in the end zone at MetLife. That was the last uh, Patriots uh, memory that I can remember. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I mean, I have up. parades. I have parades. I can th- remember back to and 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 AFC championships and Super Bowls. Uh, do you remember the Joe Namath Super Bowl? Uh, I wasn't alive. No, you weren't born. No, no, I was not born. <laughs> I, I, I was not born for it. No. But um, you know, it, it, okay. And this is the animosity that you're going to feel throughout this whole thing because, as much as you hate me, <laughs> the feeling is mutual because we are rivals. <laughs> Most definitely. Right. I, 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 I'm at a, I'm at a, I'm at a loss here. Like I, we can't really even talk to junk. Like, there's no junk at all. <laughs> like calling <all again. laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see though. Um, over the course of the next couple of seasons, I think, uh, you know, there might be a change. And 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 I think CJ's probably got some questions. I think that'll that'll go toward along those lines. But um, losing Tom Brady, you know, having Cam Newton come in. Um, obviously, Bill Belichick is still in the building. So. Um, you guys basically have, if not the best, one of the very best coaches in the history of the game. Awesome, I, I, look, we can't knock that stuff. Um, it is a reality. Um, but uh, how do you, how do you kind of see some of the changes that have uh, transpired over the course of this past offseason? I mean, how how much of an impact do you think that's really going to have? Yeah, I mean, I think as far as this Patriots team goes, and uh, you know, I want to be a little humble about it, but I think this is the most gettable. Patriots team we've seen in 20 years you know I don't think Jets fans go into most weeks against the Patriots with high expectations because they have been that good and with all the players that have opted out the uh, Marcus Cannon the uh, Dante Hightower you know tons of guys have opted out uh and the fact that the greatest quarterback that's ever played the game is now gone uh this Patriots team is depleted they had one of the worst offenses in the league last year so yeah I mean this you know the the Patriots used to be in another stratosphere. They've they've really kind of come back down to earth a little bit. Yeah. All right. So, what do you think that the New England Patriots learned about their football team last year? Now, remember, you guys won twelve and four. Um, AFC East champions. Unfortunately, had an early exit to the to uh, the the uh, Tennessee Titans, who actually had a um a, a rather a rather deep run, so to speak, in in the playoffs last year. But what do you think that the Patriots learned learned about themselves? Uh, Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing I think that they really learned is, you know, it's got to be more than just defense. You know, for years, the Patriots have either been one, you know, one side of the ball or the other. Either they've had a big offense and a defense that's allowed a ton of yards or a really good defense and then not a very good offense. I think that they, they really are figuring out that there needs to be some balance on that football team. All right. Um, what do you think was the mission in the off season for the new England Patriots going into this season? Yeah. Survive. I think, right. Uh, with, you know, all the uncertainty from COVID, um, you know, I really think that that probably threw a monkey wrench in some of their draft plans. I'm not sure how much they knew about some of these guys opting out and trying to fill some of those holes. Um, it's, you know, the Tom Brady thing is going to be huge, what do the Patriots look like? What are they going to do? Uh, so I think that there's a lot of unknowns with the football team, even though that they have a pretty good core still there. That, uh, you know, I think they're just going to be kind of flying by the seat of their pants on this one, at All least right. for the next season. All right. So where do you think that the New England Patriots have improved this offseason with the moves that they've made? Uh, well, I think that their depth in the secondary is next level, right? Uh, drafting Josh Duggar, who's been very good uh, this uh, – do we call it a preseason? What are we calling it? Yeah. Uh, you know, workouts, whatever. He's been yeah. very good by all accounts. Uh, they still bring back the two McCourty brothers, uh, Joe Juan Williams, who was a high draft pick. Um, Stephon Gilmore is the best defensive player in the league. A lot of people overlook that, 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 
you know, he's the best corner in the league. So in a league driven by wide receivers now, it really helps to have a, a shutdown corner. So I think that, that that's probably the strength of the football team is there in their secondary. Yeah. All right. So now where do you think that the New England Patriots need to improve uh, going into the 2020 season? Uh, there's, I mean, there's so many areas that we could talk about on this, right? Clearly their offense was abysmal last year. Wide receiver is clearly a concern. Who knows what Nikhil Harry is going to do for this team? Uh, you know, he didn't start off very good last year, missing the first 10 games of the season, coming on late. So, you know, now that he's had a full year in the league and now that he's been practicing with Cam Newton, you know, maybe that will help shore up that part of the offense. But, you know, all the, all the parts that need improving are clearly all on offense. They had a lot of problems on the offensive line last year. Isaiah Wynn is still a question mark there at either right or left tackle, wherever they're going to play that kid. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's just a lot of holes. There really is. And, you know, the Joe, the, uh, Joe Tooney franchise tag is good for the Patriots because he's one of the best left tackles or left guards in the game. You know, there aren't a whole lot of people better than him. He was all pro, but it is only a one-year deal, and he could walk after next year. So, you know, the depth on the offensive line of wide receiver are probably two of the bigger holes without even mentioning uh, the fact that Tom Brady has now walked away. Yeah. You know, that you're, you're, you're kind of bringing up, uh, I guess, maybe a, even a little more of a, of a difficult situation for me because I actually – love Nikhil Harry. I was really wanting us uh, to try to to try to do what it is that we needed to do to bring him in um, or, or to draft him, excuse me, that just I, I really, really like that kid. Um, I, I really think that might be uh, or, or him, his his play um, in regards to, you know, settling Cam Newton into the position, I think is actually going to really be a really big part of, of, of maybe keeping the team relevant, even though you know, so many folks are saying with the with the uh, exit of Tom Brady that uh, you know you guys are going to take a steep dive. I, I don't necessarily know. Do I agree with that in full? Yes, it's difficult to replace a Tom Brady, but uh, I don't think we can you know dismiss the fact that Tom really wasn't playing at the same level that he has been over the course of his his first ballot Hall of Fame career um, up until that point. But uh, Cam Newton, Cam Newton is no slouch, and uh, getting the kill Harry back and having him for a full season, I think, is going to be a really big deal. And, yeah, I mean, uh, it should be, you know, it it should be a help that he's there for a whole season. He had that nagging, I think it was a hamstring injury that he got in preseason, you know, and they put him on IR, so that benched him for 10 weeks. So, it, and listen, you know, I mean, it's a wide receiver driven league. He's a fast guy. He's big. He's got hands. Hopefully he's going to be good. Hopefully. Right. But it's the rest of the core there that, you know, uh, what does Edelman have left? You know, very quietly, Edelman has gotten older. Damian Bird has, has never played with the team before. And Gunnar Olszewski and Jacoby Myers are second-year players. They kind of really need to step up into the mix. But um, is it really going to take all that much for the Patriots? You know, I, I understand what people are saying, that, that you know, they're going to be worse. Tom Brady has left. But how is that possible? Most of that defense is still there. And they were one of the worst offenses in the league last year. So – Maybe Cam's mobility, which Tom Brady never possessed, and maybe, you know, rolling out the quarterback a little bit and doing some other things might provide wrinkles that could actually help boost the offense. That, that actually is – The next question yeah. that, that I wanted to ask you. I'm sorry, Kevin, to jump on you, but I wanted to get no, this. No, I was just asking a great point. Um, how do you think that Cam Newton is actually going to fit in the New England Patriots offense, given what they like to do? Now, in the past, you know, Tom Brady has always opted for the high percentage short passes. He can dink and dunk to death. He can he can gut the he can gut defenses from the inside out. Okay. Now, w one of the things that Cam Newton uh, likes to do is he likes to extend the play with his legs. He also likes to throw the ball deep. So, I guess my question is going to be with. with the receivers that you guys that you guys have, with not really proven guys being out there, how is that going to affect the offense? Or do you think they may start to go back to being more run heavy? Uh, well, you know, it's funny that you say that because the Patriots actually, in the last few years, have been one of, if not the top most run heavy teams in the league already. 
people don't talk about it. They don't mention it because all the focus is on Brady. But I don't think the offense is really going to dip, right? Because, you know, obviously the spotlight's on Brady. Brady leaving. Brady's not there anymore. What are they going to do? I think that you've already gotten a preview of it, though, right? Tom Brady was suspended for four games not too long ago. And they had a mobile quarterback come in, in Jimmy Garoppolo. And they won. They went three and one in that span. And the only reason they lost the other game is because Jacoby Brissett played with a broken thumb. I think that, you know, they are already prepared to have these wrinkles thrown in. If you go back to, you know, week one against Miami when, when Garoppolo was the starter, they rolled him out. They moved him around. It wasn't, re- you know, it wasn't really a problem. How many people thought the Patriots were going to go three and one without Tom Brady when he was suspended? Right. Yeah, that, that's definitely uh, something to take into consideration because, you know, the New England Patriots offense, regardless of who's been under center, has always been a pain in the neck for other for, for other teams in the league. And just when you seem to think you have them on the ropes, you know, that's when they go and they pull something else out on you and they they find just a different way to beat you. It's like they do just enough in order to beat you. And, and Bill Belichick has pretty much had the entire league's number, you know, up, up to this point. And, you know, us as Jet fans, all right, I'm going to throw this out there, 100% disclosure. Okay, we were all hoping that Tom Brady's skill set was actually going to, in essence, decline to where the point where the Jets maybe could catch a little lightning in the bottle and catch the Patriots napping. And, you know, despite the fact of how badly the Jets have performed over the past few years, you know, the, the Jets have always played the New England Patriots tough. And they've always made the games close, except for last year where basically Adam Gase punted on the first game because we had Luke Falk in there, a quarterback. And then we had the infamous Monday night game in, in which the Patriots shut the Jets out with, with the mics on the sidelines and Sam Donald saying, I, uh, I feel like I'm seeing ghosts. So, well, you know. well, let's go back to the ghost game, right? You're talking about, you know, what the Patriots are going to do. Um, you know, and I, I'm not trying to run salt in the wound here by saying let's go back to that game because it was great for me, not so much for you guys, I'm sure. But as Jets fans, how much cover zero have you ever seen the Patriots play? Right. They played cover zero that night. Never happens. Right. You know, uh, the Patriots and their strategy changes every week. Every week there's a new game plan, offensively and defensively. So uh, does it hurt Tom Brady's not there anymore? I'm, on the inside, I'm a little crushed. I got to be honest, guys. Yeah. But if you're going to replace them, you know, a former league MVP and Cam Newton's not a bad way to go for a year. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, look, now the I guess another question now circling back to Cam Newton and then I got a couple other questions that I want to ask you. Um what do you what what kind of Cam Newton are you guys looking to get? Do you need him to be 2015 Cam Newton, where he made it to a Super Bowl and, and, you know, Ron Rivera seemed to, uh, you know, get whatever he could out of him? Or do you just need him to be a competent game manager enough to not turn the ball over? That More the latter than the former, right? Is, you know, for the most part, the Patriots pride themselves on whoever is in there, whether it was Garoppolo, whether it was Brissett, whether it was Brian Hoyer or Matt Castle. The yeah. Patriots pride themselves on not turning the football over, right? So as long as Cam's managing fumbles and interceptions, I think the Patriots can have a, you know, I don't know, moderately successful season. I'm not very hopeful for the Patriots' uh, final record this year, just knowing what their schedule is. But, you know, I mean, they don't need him to be great. They need him to be good, you know, okay. uh, don't turn over the football. You know, it, it, he's going to add some new dimension to uh, teams trying to defend him. How? What was the last time the Jets ever needed to have a spy on defense because Tom Brady was going to run to 30 yards? All right. Right. So that's there now, right? When was the, you know, and Brady did throw the ball downfield a little bit, but Cam's probably got a little stronger of an arm. So, you know, that threat is now a little more prevalent, I think, as well. So, the completion percentage might not be as high as Tom Brady's, but, I, you know, again, they had one of the worst offenses in the league last year. How hard is it going to be to be better than that this year? Yeah. True. Yeah, absolutely.
am as another dimension. We talk a lot of junk on this on this show about uh, the Patriots, and and deservedly so. They've been kicked. But the reality of it is, and I mean, as as somebody who who really tries to be as as realistic about football as I possibly can, um, I am scared out of my wits about what Cam Newton is going to bring to this team. We've seen Cam play at a high level with less talent, with less coaching. Now to put him in a situation with 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 a what virtually is an unknown because we really don't know how Bill is going to use him. So. Um, understanding what he's capable of, that dual threat, adding adding that dimension to that offense. And then again, to your point, having still one of the most, you know, or one of the better defenses uh, in, in the league, man, I, I, you know, it, it, as, as much as we say it's wide open, as much as people might want to say that the Patriots are, are, are going to, you know, maybe fall a little bit, falling for them is not necessarily falling far, especially considering the best uh, perennially uh, in the league. You know, I, I, I really don't see. It. I, I think uh, I think we're going to play them tough. We always play you guys tough. I mean, uh, anyway, we'll give it that way. This talent, coaching, all of the other things that we have had. It, you guys have it. Um, if we can, if we can play you guys tough, or if we can at least maybe level the playing field a little bit, I think that bodes well for us. You guys, I'll just be honest. If, if I will never write the Patriots off, they are um, as of right now. There's a lot of unknowns. I think every, for every team in the AFC East this season, that there's a, a lot of questions. Um, they might say that the the question marks in New England are larger just because. I don't know. Cam Newton ain't no, is, is nothing to sneeze at, man. I, I I really think you guys are are gonna. It's gonna be solid, even even if it's different. It'll be solid. Maybe. I, I, how, how do you feel about maybe just looking at it? And saying it's going to be different, not necessarily worse, not necessarily you know better. Particular, it's it's probably just going to look different. I mean, is, is that kind of reasonable to to say that you think? I mean, it is reasonable, right? But as a Patriots fan, and I and I, I hate to be this way because it just sounds crappy to to have yeah. confidence in it. But you know, Bill Belichick, Malcolm Malcolm Butler was working at Popeyes before Bill Belichick gave him a job. You know, a few years back, Joe Klein was an American sumo wrestler in Japan and put him on the offensive line. Like, in a COVID year where a lot of guys have opted out, I, I, I have confidence that Belichick can fill holes that other coaches don't seem to be able to consistently do, right? So when you guys have a guy like C.J. Mosley who's opted out, that might be a bigger hole for old crazy eyes over there in Adam Gase than it might be for Bill Belichick. Well, I don't necessarily think that it, 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 it'll definitely leave a hole, but you know, since Adam Gase turns, uh, turns the defense over to Greg Williams, the onus is going to be on him to have to, to compensate for the loss of CJ Mosley. But I mean, if you, if you think about it, you know, last year we played an entire, uh, pretty much an entire season without CJ Mosley. Now, granted we did no, have- you we we did have the benefit of Jamal Adams, you know, to do a lot of the things that CJ Mosley probably would have been asked to do during the course of the year. And we don't have him th- this year. So that, that just means that other guys are going to have to step up. So. No, th- I was just more using it as an example, right? Like I just think Bill Belichick has a better track record and is better equipped to, you know, in, in a season filled with COVID and opt outs, I think he's better equipped and more creative to be able to fill those holes than most other coaches are. Oh, absolutely. You have to give Belichick all the credit in the world because he's able to, you know, to, to mask weaknesses and to, to mask, you know, weak points within the Patriots and, and still, you know, utilize whatever he can to, to, to get the upper hand on, on his opponent. You know, so, I, I mean, what's going to be interesting for, for me is it, it's going to be interesting to see exactly – how the Patriots draft class is going to be able to contribute this upcoming year. That actually segues into my next question. I wanted you to give us your thoughts on the, on the Patriots draft class this year. And who do you think in your opinion would probably be able to contribute right away? Great question. Well, uh, I love the Patriots draft class this year. I think that there's some (laughs) really versatile guys in there, some really interesting picks. Uh, the pride. Well, let's start with the pride of Lenore Ryan, Josh Duggar. Okay. What a player so far. What a player. Versatile, has some size, has some speed. He picked off Cam Newton. Yeah, I don't know if this is a, 
a statement on Josh Duggar or Cam Newton, but he picked off Cam Newton five times this this uh, summer. Led the team in interceptions. Yeah. So, so that's, good. that's a positive sign. It is. Right? And, and you're going to, uh, you know, we're going to find out about these rookies real quick, right? Because uh, the, where the Patriots lack depth is at linebacker. Dante Hightower opting out. We lost Van Noy in the offseason. And we lost uh, Jamie Collins, right? They, they, Jamie, I think, went to Detroit. And, and Van Noy is now in Miami. So, and Freddie Jennings, who was a, God, was he a third round pick? I think he might have been a third round pick. And Josh Uche from Michigan, they're going to be playing right away. You know, it's going to be Juwan Bentley that, that, that's going to be kind of, you know, for the better word, the, the captain of that, that group. And those guys are going to get a lot of playing time. So, we're going to find out, you know, about those guys real quick. So, uh, I don't know, you know, I know Uche's got, a lot of speed and that uh, Anthony Jennings played at Alabama. What better, you know, school to come from to go to the NFL than Alabama, I guess. But who knows if they can play at the next level? I think that that's the same for every rookie. You don't really know, but we're going to find out about them quick. And then, but I think the Patriots most exciting kind of guy that they drafted is Dalton Keene. Are you guys familiar with Dalton Keene? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Tight end out of Virginia Tech. And God forbid I'm going to make this comparison and I'm comparing him on the football field, not off the football field, okay. but he's a lot like Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's got some size, but he's also kind of like a tweener. He's not a receiver, but he's not like a huge tight end. Yeah. And he, you know, he's going to probably play some fullback. He's probably going to play some tight end and he's probably going to play some receiver. And for Bill Belichick, he loves those guys. If you can play more than one position, you can play for Bill Belichick. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Dalton Keene and Devin Asiasi. Yeah. True. Man. Rich get richer. It's going to be, it's, it, it's going to be interesting. To so, Kev, you got any questions? You know what? Um, more often than not, um, you know, the, the expectation is that the Patriots uh, – are going to be, you know, top of the league, uh, you know, AFC uh, East division champions, uh, perennial playoff uh, contentions, uh, you know, year in, year out, regardless of what happens, injury, hell, high water, whatever. Um, do you think just, just, and I mean, this may be just a fan question, so I'll, I'll just ask this, you know, just kind of as a fan. Um, do you, do you, is is the Patriots nation kind of expecting a change of guard? Are they kind of expecting, or, or you think they're bracing themselves right now to not necessarily be that year in and year out? I've heard a lot of them talking about, you know, tank for Trevor and all of that. And COVID does kind of give reasonings behind why some of the guys aren't going to play. But I mean, is, is that something that the, the the fan base in New England really is is looking to embrace? Or you know, I, I can understand you being confident, but. As a, as a whole, because obviously I only interact with a few Patriots fans, I'll just be honest. Um, does it seem like you guys maybe might be looking at this as a, as kind of an off year and expecting maybe to be in that Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes or or maybe even to look like they're trying to get to that level? It, does it does it do, do the Patriots fans do they kind of feel maybe this might be kind of a one off season? Or are they going into it really thinking that you know we could still win the Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean it's Boston guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, if they're not playing in Boston, but it's basically still Boston, uh, Boston sports, much like New York sports, there's a level of expectation, correct? Yeah. I don't think anyone is going, hey, let's win one this year. No <laughs> one wants to do that. Everyone wants to, you know, everyone wants to, you know, I don't know how realistic it is. I, I see the Patriots going yeah. seven and nine this year. <laughs> right. I, well, I have them going seven and nine this year. So I don't know if that... See. You know, helps or hurts, but I, you know, I, I, I feel like in Boston though they're not going to care. Yeah, it's like New York, right? Does anyone, you know, everyone's mad and like everyone should expect it, but everyone's mad every year when the Jets stink. Everyone's mad every year when the Mets stink, yeah. right? Or the Knicks. It's Boston. It's the same kind of thing, right? So I think that there's a level of expectation. Now listen, if they go in and they stink, you know, Belichick's more than earned a bad season. He's not getting fired. Yeah. Right. And they'll figure out quarterback going forward. There'll be guys out there like there were this off season. 
You know, there were other guys out there. There was Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston, and obviously they ended up with Cam. But there'll be a, there'll be a quarterback available, and they'll figure something out going forward, whether it's in the draft or through free agency. But you know, the expectations I think are still going to be there, whether they meet them or not. I don't think that they will, but I think that the expectations are still there. Yeah, that's interesting because you kind of actually stole my thunder on the next question that I was going to ask you, which was what were your expectations for the Patriots this football season? So, um, believe it or not, um, Speedy Petey from the Worldwide Sports Radio Network actually put up some records over there. Had the Bills and the Patriots tied at 9-7. and seven. Um, The Jets going 7-9. and nine, And the Dolphins, I believe, at 6-10 and 10 with the Bills winning the, the tiebreaker over the Patriots for the AFC East. Wow. Now. Just really quick, what what I want to segue into is uh, I want to know, in, in your opinion, now, look, I, I know you're going to be biased and you're going to look at the Patriots and everything as, as far as... I just said 7-9. and nine. If I was biased, I would have been like, nope, 11-5, and five, guys, let's go, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> you're not... You're not catching my gist yet. Give me a second yeah. here, okay? Let me let me paint the picture for you, all right? So Terrific. <laughs> so going up against the Jets this year, do you think that the Jets will be a little bit more of a tougher matchup for the Patriots than years past, or do you think it's just going to be the same old business as usual? Yeah, I, I struggle with that, right? I'm going to struggle with this question a lot because there's going to be positives and negatives here, okay? your defense is probably worse, right? Your, your defense is better off having Jamal Adams at safety than without him. He's one of the best safeties in the league. I think we can all agree on that, right? Yeah. I so that would that. probably make it easier for the Patriots yeah. offense. The, the difference on whether the Jets are going to compete is going to be, you know, really measured probably in the growth of Sam Darnold more than anywhere else. Right. Because, you know, I realize this is a Jets podcast called Weapons Hot, but referring to this Jets team, it should be Weapons Not. Like, who is out there? Right. You know well, we've, we, our grievances against the New York Jets and, and, and their, yeah. their, their, their criminally neglecting of the offensive line, the wide receiver position, um, you know, a, a lot of other places are, are, are well documented. But, you know, I think that this is the first year – that at least for me, as a Jets fan, I uh, I know Kevin has voiced his opinion. You know, I actually feel a little bit optimistic, cautiously, in regards to Joe Douglas as a GM. Because I'll be honest with you, I feel like Mike McCagnin completely neglected the offensive line, neglected the offensive line for five years, went ahead and drafted Sam Darnold, and basically told him, okay, now go out and win with the water boy, the bum under the bridge, and the 16-year-old kid from Publix who, you know, couldn't catch a cold, let alone a pass. Okay, so I, I really think that Jets' general managership over the past few years have really done nothing to surround Sam Darnold with weapons. Now, Joe Douglas tried to change that this year, at least. He surrounded Sam Darnold with, in my opinion, on paper anyway, a much improved offensive line, which which to me is a very big factor in Sam Darnold being able to take that step in year three that, that us as Jet fans are hoping that he's going to take. Now, as far as the wide receiver position, sure, we had a very wide, a very deep wide receiver draft. Okay, the Jets only ended up coming out with Denzel Mims. Okay, now Denzel Mims is... Don't sleep on Denzel Mims. He's terrific. Oh, oh no, we, we absolutely love Denzel Mims. But, uh, but see, there's a couple of other guys that, that Kevin and I have our, have our eye on. George Campbell, who unfortunately did not make the practice squad. He ended up getting cut. He was an undrafted free agent. Lawrence Cager, who actually made the practice squad, okay, who, in my opinion, I think had he not gotten hurt, would be on the starting roster. He probably would have beaten out Jeff Smith. Okay, and I think that the only reason that Jeff Smith was is on that roster is because Lawrence Cager got hurt. Okay, he's somebody who who I I feel like, you know. Did he, you watch Lawrence Cager play college football? Yes, I did. I did. Yeah, I he's, know, not, I, he's not on. I, I, live, I live in Georgia, so you know the, the guys right, right here in, in our backyard. So I've seen him. I, right, listen, be happy I've, he didn't make that roster. Yeah, you know what? I'll just be honest. Um, 
I think that the kid will contribute if given an opportunity, maybe towards the end of the season. I know he's raw coming out. I think he's got talent. I, I, I honestly do think that athletically, he's probably one of the more gifted that we have on the team, even though he might not necessarily have the football acumen just yet to be that good. But um, him being on the practice squad, I think, might actually be the best thing for him. We'll, we'll see how that works out because we – I right mean, now, just, be, just be happy Lawrence Cager isn't going to be there because Georgia had one of the worst offenses in football last year, and that was his transfer year. And Lawrence Cager was absolutely one of the worst wide receivers in the country when he was with Miami. Be happy he's not there. You guys are lamenting over uh, a, a practice squad player. You guys have nothing. You have a nice tight end. I like that kid. I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. But it's him and Mims and nobody. Well, yeah, you know, we've got can't, can't always discount Jamison Crowder, yeah, Bashad, got, you know, Crowder, Crowder, Crowder. I mean, you know, so I mean, we've the got, Jets have, we've got, we've got the, guys. The, the Jets have receivers, and one what? of the biggest things that I'm th- that I'm taking a look at is is that we don't have a true number one, but we have guys that can be serviceable. So I think personally that the Jets could very well be successful just like we've seen the Patriots do in the past without a bona fide guy receiver, have, a, have, have yeah. guys who can come out, who can make plays, like what? Julian Edelman, Danny one hit from a wheelchair, Amendola, how many times has he burned the Jets, okay, <laughs> on three different uniforms that he played for. Put okay, some respect on, on the man's name. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> Oh, look, look, listen, wow. Danny Amendola has hey, rings. How, hey, how, well, name the jet that has rings. Right, listen, yeah, I'm, not, uh, I'm not balking at the, at, at the rings, okay? I, I'm bo- what, what I'm saying is, is that Danny Amendola, before he got to the New England Patriots, was basically one hit from a wheelchair because he was in the no, no, no. He, because he was I, in the concussion protocol for two straight years. I understand what you're saying, right? But but here's the difference. You know, you're trying to compare, you know, uh, what the Jets could do with the, with their their weapons, and I'm using air quotes right now when I say that, guys. No, that's fine. Similar to what the Patriots did. I mean, the difference is, you know, uh, when the Jets had like a Darrell Revis, the Patriots had like a Randy Moss. They had a really good receiver. Right. It's not going to take. You know, and even Darrell had a little help over the top when he was defending him. Stephon Gilmore can take anyone on your team one on one, any one of them. So how are they going to get open when you can double cover third options and you and you know your only play for Sam Darnold is to throw the best defensive player in the league? Well, yeah. I think personally, to be honest with you, it's good. It's going to be a challenge for the Patriots to actually get their running game going when the Jets have one of the best run defenses in the league. So they're 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 gonna try to make Cam Newton one dimensional. Now, how successful they'll be, we don't know. We're not gonna know that until the rubber meets the road. But I think there's a good chance that we could see some some good entertaining football finally between the Jets and the Patriots. And I think I do I do give the Jets a snowball's chance in hell against the Patriots. This is probably gonna be the best chance that the Jets may have in the last ten <laughs> years to beat this team. Well, uh, well, listen here. Here's the thing: the Patriots are gettable this year. I do agree with you. The Patriots are gettable, right? But you know, as, but as far as but but you're you're comparing this good Jets defense and they're pretty good, right? I'm not I'm not taking anything away from them, but they've never even seen a quarterback run from a Patriots quarterback. They've never seen an RPO. There's going to be so many more things now that the Jets would have to prepare for. And quite frankly, I don't believe Adam Gase is close to smart enough to figuring that out. I'm not necessarily caring about what Adam Gase is going to do with sitting Greg Williams, and and I'll just say this, yeah suit for what it is that we uh, feel this season. Um, Greg Williams, even with the loss of, of Jamal Adams, even uh, the last season, if you really think about it, with C.J. Mosley out, we still had a top 10 round. So as of now, the question we're going to play, but I'll be honest, if I have any questions, it is not about the defense. Even if they do take a step back, the best unit on this team. And I do think that we, we have enough talent we have uh, you know, is now for we can be our, our defensive line, which again is going to be uh, you know one of the the strongest units that we have. Um, it, it it's going to create some pressure. It's going to cause it's going to cause some uh, you know some 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 haste uh, back there when uh, when it comes to you know quarterbacks. 
going to be the case this season. I do think it's going to be a lot different. It really, to me, is as much as I, 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 I want to believe that it's possible, Adam Gase and the offense are really – defense is going to be there. I don't necessarily think it's going to be as – to think just because we lost Jamal Adams. Oh, we lost Jamal Adams, but we're getting improved Quentin Williams. We're getting improved Marcus May. We're getting an influx. We're getting our we're getting Brian Poole back. We're getting, you know, uh you know, our, our linebackers back. We're getting Avery Williamson back. And and these are guys that bring a lot to the table that we didn't actually have uh, at full, you know, uh, capacity last season. So it's not just gonna be where, you know, uh, teams are gonna come in and walk all over us. I'll just say that. There's gonna be some teams that think, oh yeah, we got the Jets this they're gonna leave with their behinds and I, and I say that with the understanding that, yes, we haven't been a great team, but we've had years, we've had solid production What in, in certain aspects. We're in a in a position now where we just need to put certain things together and we'll, we'll be better than where it is that we were. So, I mean, we, we, I'm not going to say we, we got better because of the subtraction. I think we got better because we've added some guys and we're going to change a little bit about what it is that we have um now currently so just the way the new england is going to look different we kind of don't know what to expect from them um the jets are going to look different uh, uh buffalo is going to look different Miami's going to look different everybody's going to look different nobody has any film nobody has any preseason to go on nobody really has any of that and when it just comes down to when these games are played um i i think if if you sleep on any of any of the teams in this in this uh, league in, in this division this season I think there's probably going to be some rude awakenings for some to be had. Now, um, how does that register as far as wins and losses and, and, you know, the hierarchy in the division? I don't know how that's going to shake out just yet, but I will say this. The Patriots cannot be uh, dismissed as being at the top, but uh, to uh, some of the points that CJ was making earlier about the rankings, Buffalo is, you know, as far as talent wise, Buffalo is right up there. And I think that we sneakily are coming up close. So within these next two seasons. It's so cute the way Jets fans wear their optimism. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, we have no choice, to be perfectly honest with you. But but we also and, and, and I'll say this: they always t- they always talk about they always talk about we're the worst team in the league or, or we're one of the worst teams in the league. But we've never been really one of the worst teams in the league. We just have had horrible leadership, horrible coaching. We've had talent, and and we just we haven't had people to manage it. So now, yeah, listen, I, I, I res- I, listen, I really respect your opinion. You're both a couple of nice guys. But as far as that statement goes. You guys have drafted in the top five the last five years in a row. Yep, that's one of the worst teams in the league. That's one of the worst. I don't, I don't, I don't care who has talent. Listen, the Dallas Cowboys every year are the most talented teams. Do they ever win? No. I'm tired of hearing about talent. Let's, let's, uh, you know, what was, what was the quote from the NFL coach? You are what your record says you are. You're one of the worst. Can't be mad at that. Yeah, we can't, we can't um, uh, debate that because we've had. Like Kevin said, we've had horrible leadership. We've had horrible coaching. We've had good players that we have drafted and not been able to, to, to groom them into the superstars that we need them to be. So, hey, nobody's questioning that. And, and you know what? Between, between Kevin and myself there, Jeff, you know, you're looking at over 80 years yeah, of, of fandom that we've been suffering and a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder. And I'm surprised <laughs> that, both, that, that both Kevin and I are not in Alcoholics Anonymous Okay, for for I, as I, much I, as you <laughs> bring to wash away. It's a credit to your character, CJ. It's a credit to your character that you haven't turned to drugs and alcohol. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm going to have a drink. So, after, I'm going to have a drink after the show. So <laughs> I will. I will. I will tell you this though, right? As much as I hate the both of you and hate the Jets, and and that's really just because of your fandom. You both seem very nice, right? You gentlemen did give me my most favorite win of the 2019 season. Oh. Beating Dallas was amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are not the first person that has said that either. Right. <laughs> l- l- listen, I don't, I don't care how, l- and listen, there's no hate on my side, right? How do you hate a Jets? How, how does a Patriots fan hate the Jets? We, we make you roll over and we scratch your belly, you know, every week. Like, we, we, there's no hate here. I can understand how you hate us, right? But we don't hate the Bills. We, we're rubbing their, we're patting their bellies every week. The Dolphins, we're doing the same thing. Yeah. For years, we've been doing it. But I think that we can all come together and agree, we all hate the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> these are facts. Yes. Those, those, yes, those these are facts. are facts. You know those what? I like that. The star honest, on their... The star on the helmet is not a logo, guys. It's a rating. 
I, I, I literally, I literally got into it with three Dallas Cowboy fans at my job today. I have a my 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 mask, you know, where we have to wear masks. I have a Jets mask, and I wore it today because you know the, the beginning of football season. I was excited, and uh, you know, obviously. I got a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans are walking around here. You know, they're giving me the side eye, and I'm just like, oh, well, let's Google Google the last time we played you guys. How about that? I was in Dallas, sir, for that game. So, yeah, take all that and, and, and walk on with you. I, I really can't stand Dallas. I, I mean, what a terrific win that was last year, right? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Let me, let me awesome. tell you, the Jets needed it. They needed it in the worst way. So, Well, you know what's really funny about that, right? Like, it, it, here's the thing. If I was a Jets fan, that would be the most painful thing I could ever really watch to know that they can beat Dallas, yeah. but then they blow donkeys against everybody else. That, that's Look, been, that's Cincinnati been a, and Miami. Cur- right. That, that has been a New York Jets fans curse. Uh, it's, uh, and I'm actually going to end the show on this. That has been a New York Jets fans curse for probably the last 40 plus years because yeah. we have always found a way to beat a team that we have no business of beating, but and then lose the undefeated team, and then lose the winless team to an inferior team that, on paper, we should beat. And, we lost the well, team. you know, I mean, that's what's funny because as a Patriots fan, I can feel that frustration because the Patriots every year are, are, are pretty good, right? I think we can all agree they're all they're always pretty good, and then the Patriots always throw up that one game. You know, last year against the Dolphins, did the, did the Dolphins have any business beating the Patriots last year? No. No, not at all. We always throw up a, a, just a stinker every year, just an absolute stinker, at least one a year. Yeah. You know, we, we, lost, you know, the two, so. we lost the two winless teams last season. The narrative on our season changes drastically if we win those two games. So, I mean, that, that, that is, in, in, in essence, exactly the life of a Jets fan. You know, how, how, how do we show so much promise – and then literally in games where we're supposed to win, we, 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 you know, any given Sunday, I know that's the saying, but we're supposed to beat those teams and we lose I, in the most ridiculous fashion. I, 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 well, I, when you go into work, right. When you go into work and you're wearing your Jets mask, you know what to tell them now, but that star on their helmet yeah. isn't a logo. Yeah, I was, it's I was a rating one, one star. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use that. All right, you. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, that's going to do it for tonight's episode of Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast. I would like to thank Mr. Jeff, Mr. Jeff, for joining us. Jeff, you have a social media thank account. <laughs> Any type of social media information you could give to the I guy. have, I have, the, I have the Twitter machine. Don't go there; it's filled with vulgarities, uh, <laughs> guys. It, it was we, an absolute. We, we, we love vulgarities on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I mean, honestly, guys, I, you know, I didn't know what to expect coming in tonight. I really had a lot of fun, and it was really exciting to be on a podcast for a team that made firemen Ed quit. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you again for coming on. Pleasure, guys. We love it. Uh, it's, all right. All right. You can the show on Twitter at CNC Jets Factor. You can follow me at JetsFan0523. My partner in crime on the other side of the glass, Mr. Kevin Jackson at Spotty Blackman. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash weapons hot. Check out that page. Hit that like button. Uh, all of our content is up there. Message us for message you right back. We love going back and forth with fans about this team also leave us some feedback about how we're doing because the only way that this pod this show can get better is by hearing from you guys the listening public this show would not be would not be possible without all of you that tune in every single week really quick i want to say thank you to airman ryan reedy from the 45th medical group dude yes. thank you so much for tuning in tonight also miss linda Strani- uh uh Straniti. Uh, also, Mr. Larry Davis, Simon Baccarella, as always, Jerry Moore Jr., and, of course, Mr. Kyle Corber, a- a- a.k.a. Speedy Petey. So, also, don't forget to catch us out, catch us on the Snowman Digital Media. Shout out to Snowman, Mr. Brian Snow, and thank you to his crew over there for helping us out. Also, don't forget Sports War Radio. Check out my boy, Paul Edson Jr., at Boy Green 25 I know I'm saying a lot. But I want to make sure I get everybody in here. And, of course, don't forget to check the official sponsor of the show, StatementGames.com. Go and make your statement. Enough talk. It's time to go out there and make your statement, ladies and gentlemen. The the NFL season is upon us. And go out there and don't forget Weapons Hot has tournaments every single week. 
sponsored by StatementGames.com. Go out there for an opportunity to win some really cool swag. All right. So for Mr. Kevin Jackson and, of course, Mr. Jeff Stott. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to end up butchering, butchering his last name. Ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll call him Jeff S. Jeff S, our AFC <laughs> analyst. All right, because he's awesome, and I appreciate him taking time tonight. This is CJ the Painkiller D. Simone signing off. We will see you guys. When we see you guys, peace, love, go Jets. And don't forget, Jets Buffalo, 1 o'clock. Let the chaos and the madness begin. Let's go. Let's get it. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.